Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Adobe Summit 2019. Brought to you by Adobe. Hello everyone, welcome to theCUBE Live Conversations here. We're covering Adobe Summit 2019 in Las Vegas. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Frick, co-hosting for the next two days, wall-to-wall -wall coverage around Adobe Summit a company that has transformed from making software to being a full-blown cloud and data provider, changing the user experience. This is our keynote review. Jeff, this morning was the keynote uh, with the CEO, um, Shantam Nu Narayan, took over in 2007 from Bruce Chisholm, CUBE alumni. Right, right. Um, what a transformation. They actually did it. They kind of kept down low, but over those years, absolutely changed the face of Adobe. We're seeing it now with a, a slew of acquisitions. Now. 17,000 people attending this conference. This is kind of an interesting story. Your thoughts? A lot of interesting stuff going on here, John, and, and I, I think fundamentally they, they took the risk, right? They changed their business from a buy a new, buy a new uh, license every year for 800 bucks, 900 bucks, whatever it used to be for Creative Cloud, to go to an online model, and I think what was interesting about what Chantanu said is when, you are, when you're collecting money monthly, you have to deliver value monthly, and it completely changed the way that they pace their company, the way they deliver products, the way their product development works. And, and they move to, as we talk about all the time, instead of a sample of data that's old and making decisions, now you can make decisions based on real-time data in the way people are actually using the product. And so they've driven that transformation, and then now by putting their whole suite in with these gargantuan acquisitions of, of Marketo. Um, now they are helping their customers really make that transition to a real-time, yeah. dynamic, digitally driven, data-driven enterprise to drive it's, this customer experience. It's interesting, Adobe's transformation is real, it's legit, it happened, it's happening. Um, it's interesting, Jeff, you and I both live in Palo Alto and I was looking through my LinkedIn and my Facebook there's literally dozens of friends and or colleagues over the years that I've interfaced with that all work at Adobe. <laughs> Between all the acquisitions, they've built quite a huge company and they brought a different set of experiences. And this is, the, to me, the big story that hasn't been told yet at Adobe. And again, this is our first time covering Adobe Summit and excited to be here and, and continue to cover this. But here's what's going on that's really important. They transformed and are continuing to transform, but they did it in a way that was clever, smart, and very predictive in their mind. They took a slow, slow approach to getting it right. And we heard the CEO talk about this. Um, they had an old software model that was too slow. They wanted to attract the next generation of users and they wanted to reimagine their product and their ecosystem, change their business model and change their engagement with customers. Very targeted in its approach, very specific to their business model. And their, the goals were innovate faster, move to the cloud, move to a subscription-based business model. But that's not it. Here the story is the data equation. There was some kind of nuances in the keynote, like we didn't get the data right initially, we got cloud right, but data is super important, and then they got it right, and that's the big story here is the data driven. And, and this is the playbook. I mean, you can almost substitute Adobe for your company if someone's looking to do transformation. Right, right. Pick your spots, execute, don't just talk about it. Right, right. Yeah, they call it the DDOM, the Data Driven Operating Model, and he pulled up the dashboard with some fake data and talked about the management team runs off of this data. And when, you know, it's everything from marketing spend and direct campaigns and where people are sampling. There was a large conversation too about the buyer journey, but to me the most important part is the buying act is not the end of the story, right? You want to continue to engage with that customer wherever and however and whenever they want to. There was an interesting stat that came out during the keynote where you know, the more platforms your customer engages with you, the much higher the likelihood that they're going to that they're going to renew, that they're going to retain. So to me, I think, you know, we talk a lot about community and engagement. And, and, and this experience concept where the product is a piece of the puzzle, but it's not the, it's not the most important piece. It might be the piece in which the experience is built yeah. around, but it's, it's just a, a simple yeah. piece. I think the guy from Best Buy was phenomenal, the story of the transformation of that company, where they want to be your trusted uh, provider of all these services. $200 uh, a, a year, they'll come take care yeah. of everything in your home. So, you know, they don't just want to ship a box, say, say goodbye, they want to stay Well, let's talk, about, let's talk about that use case. I think the Best Buy keynote, Best Buy was on the keynote with the CEO, but I think that, that what, I, what I was teasing out of that interview, and you just brought it up, I want to expand on that. They actually had massive competition from Amazon, 
So you think, oh my God, they're going to be out of business. No, they match the price. They took price off the table. So they don't lose their customers. If you want to buy it on Amazon, you can still come in the store and have an experience. Right. They shifted the game to their advantage where they said, we're not going to be a product sales company. We're going to sell whatever the client wa customers want and match Amazon's pricing and then provide that level of personalization. That then brought up the, the, key, the CEO's personalization piece, which I'd like to get your thoughts on, because you made a, uh, a stat around their emails. Right. He said, quote, personalization at scale. Right. That's what they're, That's the they're doing. Right, and they, he talked about, you know, they used to do an email blast, and it was an email blast. Now they have 40 million versions of that email that go out, 40 million versions. So it is this kind of, personalization at scale, and you know, the, the 360 view of the customer has been thrown around, we could go in the archives, we've been talking about that forever, but it seems that now, you know, the technology's finally getting to where, where it needs to be. The cloud-based uh, architectures allow people to engage in this omni-channel way that they could never do it before, and you're seeing, as you said, the most important thing is a data architecture that can pull from disparate sources. They talked about in the keynote, they showed us they actually built their customer profile as the person was engaging with the website, as they gave more yeah. information, so that they can customize all this stuff for that person. Of course, then they always mention, but don't be creepy about it, right? <laughs> don't go too far. Yeah. Um, so, so really delivering this mass, mass personalization at scale. And I think one of the lessons that's coming out of a lot of our interviews on theCUBE is get the cloud equation right first, then the data one. And I think Adobe validate that here in my mind. We're going to continue to investigate and report that dynamic. The, the hard news, Jeff, at the show was Adobe Cloud Experience is generally available, and I thought that was pretty interesting. They have a, multiple clouds, because remember they bought Magento and Mercado and a variety of other acquisitions, so they have full-on advertising cloud, analytics cloud, marketing cloud, and a commerce cloud. And underneath those key cloud elements, they have Adobe Sensei and Adobe Experience Platform. And we have a CUBE alumni coming on to talk about that. And that's making up their kind of the new, new platform, cloud platforms, Experience Cloud, they're calling it. But the CEO had an interesting quote, I want to get your reaction to that. This, he said, quote, people buy experiences, not products. So that's why they're calling it the experience cloud. I hear you in the office all the time talking about this, Jeff, so it's about the experience, right, not the right. product anymore. Right, and it's the passion that you can build around a community in that experience. My favorite example is from the old days is Harley Davidson. How many people would give you know, their left pinky to have their customers tattoo their brand on their body, right? And in the, in the Harley Davidson brand is a very special, a special uh, connotation and the people that associate with that really feel like a part of a community. The other piece of it is the ecosystem. And they talk about ecosystem and developers and open source. If you can get other people building their business on the back of your platform, again, it just deepens the hook of engagements, it opens up your innovation cycle, and I think it's such a winning formula, John, that we see over and over again. Nobody can do it by themselves, yeah. nobody's got all the smartest people in their room, so get an engaged community, get an engaged developer ecosystem, more talk of developers, and really open it up and let the creativity of your whole community drive the engagement and the experience well, forward. We will be following the personalization at scale. CUBE alumni, former CUBE alumni, who's not at the show, I wanted to get his opinion, Satya Krishnaswamy. He's head of personalization at Adobe. I pinged him on LinkedIn. We're going to get him on the Cuban studio. So keep on, we're going to follow that story. I think that's huge. This notion of personalization at scale is key. And that brings us to the next big news. The next big news was from our friend, um, former CEO of Marketo, Steve Lucas, CUBE right. alumni. Right. Um, they launched a account-based experience initiative um, with Adobe, Microsoft, and LinkedIn. And I found that very interesting, and I was talking with Ron Miller at TechCrunch on Twitter about this. LinkedIn's involved, but they're keeping it in LinkedIn. Again, the problem with data is you have these silos, but you have to figure out how to make them work. So I'm really curious to see how that works. So that, that brings up that. But I think Steve Lucas was, was more, very aggressive on stage, but he brought up a point that I want to get um, your, your thoughts on. He said, we're a B2B company, but we're doing B2C metrics. The numbers that they were doing at Marketo were in the B2C range. So, is this notion of B2B, B2C kind of blurring? I mean, right. everyone is a B2C company these days. If everything's direct to consumer, which essentially what cloud is, it's a B2C. 
Yeah, well it's interesting, right? Because we've talked about the consumerization of IT again, check the tapes, for years and years and years. And the expectations of our engagement with applications is driven by how we interact with Amazon, how we interact with, with Facebook, how we interact with these big platforms. And so you're seeing it more and more. The thing that we talked about in studio the other day with Guy is that now too you have all these connected devices. So no longer is distribution this this buffer between the manufacturer and the ultimate consumer of their products. Now they're all connected. Now they phone home. Now the Tesla says, hey, people are breaking in the back window, let's reconfigure the software to have a security system that we didn't have yesterday, that wasn't on our roadmap, but people want and now we have it today. So I think Steve's uh, perception is right on. The other thing is that you know, there's so much information out there. So how do you add value when that person finally visits you in their journey, and let's face it, most of the time, a predominant uh, portion of their engagement is going to be electronic, yeah. right? They're going to fill out a form, they're going to explore things. How are you collecting that data? How are you managing? How are you moving them along, not only to the purchase, but again, as I always like to say, it's never the order, it's the reorder, and this ongoing yeah. engagement. And that's their journey. They want to have this whole life cycle of customer experience. But I, the thing that, that, got, that caught me off guard on the keynote, again, it's the first time I went and sat in a keynote for an Adobe uh, an event, was with every, all these parts coming together with the platform, this is a cloud show, that's plain and simple. This is cloud technology, this is a data show. We've gone to all the cloud shows, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, you name it, CNCF, Linux Foundation. This is a, a show about the application of being creative in, in a variety of use cases. But the underpinnings of the conversations are all cloud. Right, and, and they had, you know, and to show their, their commitment to data and the data message, right? They had another CUBE alumni uh, on Jewel up, we used to have her on at Hadoop Summit all the time, and she talked about the data architecture. And again, some really interesting facts, goes right to cloud. She says, you know, most people, if you don't have cloud, spend too much time babysitting your architecture, babysitting your infrastructure. Get out of the way. Let the cloud babysit your infrastructure. And, talk, and she talked about a modern, yeah. big data pipe. And she's been involved with Hadoop, she's been involved with Spark, yeah. she's been involved in all this progression. And she said, you know, every engagement creates more data. So how are you collecting that data? How are you analyzing that data? And how are you doing it in real time or near real time so you can actually act on it? So it's, it's very much kind of pulling together many of these yeah. themes that we've been covering And the years. last two parts of the keynote was, you had a CIO discussion between uh, Cynthia Stoddard and Ac Ac Atticus. Atticus. Another key, Tyson, both of them key From alumni. Intuit. Right. Again, both big Amazon customers, by the way, uh, who have been very successful with, with the cloud. Um, and then you had, and Jill talking engineering. That's all there. And my takeaway from the CIO one, Jeff, I want to get your thoughts on, because it can be long in the tooth sometimes, these CIO conversation, but they highlighted that the cloud journey is, is there for, for uh, Adobe and Intuit, but the data is, has to be integrated. Talk, they talk about data variables, the, the commonality of data, and she mentioned three or four other things. And then they made a point and said, quote, data architectures are valuable for the experience and the workload. This is critical, we're hearing this over and over again. The data is not about which cloud you're using, it's about what the workload is. Right, right. The workloads are determining cloud selection. So if you need one cloud, that's good. You need two clouds. Right. <laughs> so it all, it's all dependent on the workload, not some predetermined risk management, multi-cloud procurement decision. This is a big shift. This is going to change the game in the IT landscape because that changes how people buy. And that is going to be radical. And I think they're, they're, Adobe's right on the right wave here. They're focusing on the user experience, customer experience, building the platform for the needs of the experience. I think it's very clever, I think it's a brilliant architecture. Yeah, and she said that the data, arch the data strategy lagged, right? The reporting lagged, they were trying to do this DDOM, um, they didn't have commonality of data, they didn't have really a, a data architecture. So, again, you can't build the house unless you put in the rebar, you build the foundation, you get some cement. But once you get that, yeah. that enables you to build something big and something beautiful. And, and you got to pay attention, but really, we talk about data driven, we talk about real time data, they're executing it and really forcing themselves by moving into the subscription business model. All right, final question, I want to get one more thought from you before I weigh in on my, my answer to my question, which is, what do you, in your opinion, what was the most important story that came out of the keynote? One or two or well, one story? Well, again, you know, John, I was in the TV business for years and years before getting into tech, and I know the Best Buy story, and what came before them, and what came before them, and what came before them. So what really impressed me was the digital transformation story that the CEO shared. First, to basically try to get even with their number one competitor, 
with, which was Amazon in terms of pricing and delivery, and then really rethink who they are as a company around using technology to improve people's lives. They happen to play in laundry, they play in kitchen, they play in home entertainment, they play in computers and education, so they have a broad footprint, and to really refocus, and as he said, uh, to be successful you need to align your corporate strategy and mission with yeah. people's strategy and mission. Sounds like they've been very successful in that yeah. and they continue to change the company. I agree and I would just kind of level it up and say the top story in my opinion was the fact that Adobe is winning, they're innovating, and if you look at who's on stage like Best Buy, Intuit, the people around them are actually executing with cloud, with data, at a whole nother level. They've gone to the next level. I think the big story here is Adobe has trans has transformed and continues to do transformation, and they're just at a whole nother level, and I think the story is Oracle will be eating their dust, because I think they're just going to, you know, and I think Salesforce should be watching Adobe. This is a big move. I think Oracle is going to be twisting in the wind uh, from Adobe's success. Well, like I said, you know, they tie the whole thing together from the creativity, which is what Creative Cloud is, to the delivery, to then the monetization and the measuring. So yeah. now they've, you know, they've put those pieces together, so it's a pretty complete suite. So now you can tie back, how is my conversion based yeah. on what type of creative? How is my conversion based on what type of campaigns? And, and, and again, the, the 40 million email number just blows yeah. me away. It's not the same game anymore. You yeah. have to do this, and you can't do it by yourself. Yeah. You got to have automation, you got to have good analytics, and you got to have a data infrastructure that yeah. will support your ability to do that. So, just a little report card on Adobe. Old software model, that's over. They got the new model, and it's growing, revenue supporting it. They are attracting new generation of users. You look at the demographics here, Jeff, this is not you know, a bunch of 40-something pluses here. This is a young generation, new creative model, and the products and the customer testimonials standing on the stage represent, in my opinion, a modern architecture, a modern practice, a modern cloud kind of capability. So, you know, Adobe's certainly looking good from this keynote, I'm impressed. Yep. So, okay, good, good lineup all day. Two days of live CUBE coverage here in Las Vegas for Adobe Summit. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Frick. Thanks for watching, we'll be back with, after this short break. Thank you.